Williams. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I take a call on behalf of New Zealand First in the Appropriation Supplementary Estimates Bill, which sets out a great array of financial figures and projections. There are, in fact, hundreds of cost figures in this bill. So the probity of financial figures is vital. Indeed, it is central to any discussion involving government finance. So it is all the more egregious that the government made its so-called surplus the centrepiece of its 2014 budget. Yes, balancing the government's budget is an important economic objective, but it has to be real balancing, not the manufactured, phony fiddling of the books that National did in this 2014 budget to create a surplus. The 2014 budget took the expression smokes and mirrors to a whole new height. For example, the budget is not really balanced when all sorts of creative accounting have been applied to the Christchurch rebuild costs. The government has forecast a surplus of close to half a billion dollars in the budget. At the same time, it was reducing the current budget for Canterbury earthquake matters by about the same amount. Recently, the Prime Minister indicated that the government will have to spend a further $5 billion because the Christchurch rebuild costs would escalate. So on the one hand, Canterbury earthquake matters costs for the 2014-15 budget were written down, whilst the same government was forecasting an additional $5 billion for Christchurch over coming years, which leads to the conclusion that the almost half billion dollars surplus comes at Christchurch's expense or is the worst form of creative accounting. The people of Christchurch know that they have been sacrificed so the government can boast about its books. Holding back vitally needed money to rebuild Christchurch to generate the so-called surplus amounts to a crime against its own people, or another example of government fiddling the books. The facts are clear. The government has jacked up the numbers from an insurance deal when the remains of AMI insurance were taken over. AMI, you will remember, was turned into Southern Response Earthquake Services, and that's where the fiddling started. The proceeds from this sale amounted to $252 million, which is placed in government bonds rather than settling insurance claims. A government deal with Southern Response required them thereafter to put surplus cash on its books into government bonds as well. This has been boosted by money coming in from reinsurance companies, all going into government bonds. So, hey presto, magic. We have another deception against Christchurch and an impacting on the budget surplus. It is shameless deception. Other areas of budget du du duplicity include police funding has been frozen. Now we have the police having to face an impossible choice. Do they deal with vulnerable children or go after organised crime? Also, border protection is reduced despite all the risk to biosecurity that, that that entails. Nothing has been learnt from the PSA incursion that struck the kiwi fruit industry. Also, defence capability is being undermined. Conservation has been cut despite all the environmental risks. The only genuine way to balance the budget is to grow the economy. And most importantly, that requires a realistic and sustainable exchange rate. New Zealand First has a bill to reform the Reserve Bank, to give it powers to take account of employment and exports, not just the inflation rate. A flexible monetary policy will give a realistic exchange rate that will allow many regional industries, including manufacturing, to survive and thrive. New Zealand First also have policies, including tax incentives, R&D support, accelerated depreciation, to support a broadly based manufacturing sector, not just relying on an increasingly narrow range of dairy, agricultural and log exports. Dairy and forestry now account for 40 per cent of export receipts. That is a highly vulnerable position for this country's economy. New Zealand First also have policies to support regional development, such as our Royalties for Regions policy, whereby we would return 25 per cent of Crown royalties back to the origins, the regions where the, uh, uh, the original mining or extraction was taken from. This would greatly benefit 
many regions throughout New Zealand by returning uh, that 25 per cent of Crown royalties directly back to where uh, the mining affects them. And we will tighten the rules of foreign ownership of land and housing, something that this government is afraid to do. New Zealand First will ensure that businesses stop draining the New Zealand wealth by investing and speculating in New Zealand land and housing from abroad. Because what New Zealand needs is a comprehensive economic strategy and plan. New Zealand does not need a smoke and mirrors budget, which, which is taking money out of Christchurch, which is fiddling the books, which is removing money from the likes of the police, from border protection, from defence and conservation, just so that they come up with a paper-thin surplus of 252 or 270 something million dollars. There is no sign of that coming from the national government after five and a half years of office. This is simply rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic and it is not going forward. New Zealand First has policies which will do so. I call David Bennett. Speaker, and I um, just want to put a few things straight for the public out there when they're listening to that last speech. Um, the New Zealand economy grew by more than 3.8 per cent.